Krishna, 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 Krishna. You said there's nobody on the planet without freedom. But what is what is with the children that are starving today, now, that moment? The 15 million billion people who are uh, let's 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 dead. build up the picture because that's an unfair picture. Yeah. Let's talk about the millions also who are dying from tribal wars. Let's talk about all the exploitation of wealth. Let's talk about all the all the domestic violence in the world. Let's talk about all the racial and religious violence. Let's talk about the, the cookery of, of uh, politics. Let's talk about the hypocrisy of the human existence. Let's talk about the, um, the, the, the raping of the forest, the destruction of the Mother Earth. Let's, let's, let's big it up. Let's just push it. Why just use the children? It's very easy. Children, oh, yeah. children, oh. No, they are also beings. You are once a child also, and you maybe be a child again. Mm. I don't give any special credence to children, actually, I have to say. They are just beings like little people, or if you want to call it, mm. or anything else. Mm. So let's not, uh, let's not be afraid about the subject, mm -hmm. okay? The whole human species is in a, in a, in a difficulty. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that difficulty is brought on by ignorance and arrogance. Mm -hmm. And who is responsible for it? Let's look at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who is responsible for it? This is a very, very tricky field, but I'm going to tackle it a little. <laughs> if I can, I'm going to get into big trouble for this. <laughs> Actually, for a while, it is totally unavoidable. It is totally unavoidable for a while. No single factor can be attributed as responsible. We are, you can say we are collectively responsible, but who are we? Before a thought enters your mind, did you know about it? Did you know it was coming? Did you order a certain set of thoughts for the day? I want these type of thoughts and certainly not those type of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a way of, of resisting them? Mm -hmm. How did you... Did you choose to be this manifestation consciously? Do we have any real power? It's not a dark picture. It's not a dark picture. Listen on it. We can go on to the root and say, you know, why is it that all these people, all these starving children, and somebody will be going, yes, yes, and I want to know about why we are losing all our camels. And another person will say, yes, oh, camels, you know, I want to talk about the dogs. And I want to talk about this and that and the trees and I wonder about why you're polluting the air and why somehow there's all this oil is going on. Why if we put all the voices on fire there, all of us will want to run away. All of us want to run away. Who's responsible for it? Somehow consciousness is responsible for it. Consciousness is playing this game somehow. We are the human expression of consciousness. Mm. The human being is not the controller of consciousness. They are not the possessor of consciousness. We are ourselves the effects of consciousness, the expression of consciousness, actually. Mm. <coughs> but while we have the notion of individuality and right and wrong and morals and immorals and all of these kind of things, we are going to be in a struggle. We cannot help. We cannot come together as a people. We cannot. It's never happened before. Mm -hmm that human beings, so to speak, or the human expression of consciousness, through their own endeavor, based upon the notion that their individualities or individual nations, different from each other, have the power, or the capacity, the love or the understanding to use their powers to come together to create a harmonious world. It has never happened. It has never happened. 
what has happened is that from time to time a human being here and there comes to real understanding about the true nature, capacity, potential of the human being and points the way that the way <coughs> is here to find out more about who you are and by finding out who you are actually each one, one by one because each time it is discovered that I am only that then what happens in that vessel of discovery comes the understanding all is that also and when you know all is that your actions are automatically different they're not coming from behavior they're not coming from practice they're not coming from ideology they're coming from your heart that's different this is what I want to tell you human beings cannot by determination by such by philosophy by the philosophy of uh, brotherhood. They cannot do it. Religions cannot do it. They cannot do it. Because the human ego is arrogant and selfish. What is great about the human being is their spirit. Is that we are the timeless portraying itself as time and change, as growth, as differences, as variety. That is it. Until human beings discover, I am that itself. The discover is not difficult, but there's fierce resistance in us. Because each time one comes to real understanding and begin to really expose what stands in the way is really illusory and petty, actually. But we see, we cannot admit it because we have an affection for the infection. Mm. That's what it is. Mm. We have an affection for the infection. The infection is, you know, I want to be me, and this me is pure arrogance, actually. This is what it is. Mm. We can play at being generous, oh yes, we give this nation, you know, five billion, okay, and we want so much in return for that. But the one who knows the truth wants nothing in return. It's not even anything about return, even. Mm. The light of one human being who discovers the truth has been lighting the human kingdom for thousands of years. Such is the power of a human being who realizes the truth of who they are. If we don't, we are always leaving up to the other man. You know, they are in charge, they will do it. They will do it. And it's right, because we, don't, we can't do it. We don't have the power. And the politicians can't do it also. They are also acting in still a kind of selfish energy sometimes. Now and again, also, the light of consciousness does shine through a politician or through whatever it is. And for a while, because nature just balances things, but not according to the human perspective on these things. Whatever is happening has to happen for now. Whatever is happening has to happen for now. There is not just bad things happening, beautiful things are happening also. Hmm? The, the most beautiful things goes unseen, actually. The great beauty of the whole human experience, the world experience, goes unseen. Actually, all of us could be saying great thank yous countless of times in a day. Expressions of gratitude for so much that our life shines out of pure grace. But we don't know that. Our eyes go to what is negative and perpetuates what is negative, which is also a, a part of our conditioning, a part of our potential also. But I would say that this, that the real chance we have, every chance is there, <coughs> is to discover the truth of who we are. This is it. This is why we speak about a Buddha, why they speak about even the politicians are speaking about the Buddha, or the Christ, or the the Krishnas or the Anandamayis of the world, they speak about him. Why? Because they, they, they were not taking sides, they just spoke from the truth, from love, from understanding. They were not soft and gentle and cute, and everybody was like the Dalai Lama, not like this. Sometimes they had to spank humanity with, 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 with great actions also. And they had to speak up uh, clearly and expose many wrongs. But they did it in such a way, and with such power, and such cosmic authority, 
that we had to listen and we are continuing to listen. They say Buddha lived 2,500 years ago huh? and died when? 2,000 so many years ago. Still, even today, there are new Buddhists. New Buddhists are coming. Are they coming for some dead guy that died 2,000 years ago? No, they are coming from a living spirit that shines inside and inside the heart of each being. Why could we appreciate the Buddha? Because the Buddha in you. Why can you appreciate Christ? Because Christ is in you. It is. This is what is our this is our real chance. You see? It's an easy road. It's the most delicious road. But still we don't choose it somehow. And who are we to choose it? A cocktail of consciousness being and an identity that we are person and we are this body and a sort of counterfeit version of the truth. This is what is happening. And for a while it's like this. And sometimes, just spontaneously, maybe a wave of change comes and the human consciousness shines brightly again in its true nature and capacity. And then somehow the lights dim again and we go back into the dark room for another while. But let's not fantasize about it. If you're waiting for the world to change out of pressure, it will not just change. It will change, of course. It is compelled to change. Not because human beings only want to change, but because all of this is change and changeful. It has to change. It has to in some way evolve on some level and regress on some levels. It will be like this. But it's not a dark painting. It's still a beautiful painting, and the painting changes according to your present light. As you grow more aware of the truth, you will see the glory of the universe and of God inside everything you see. The picture is not fixed. Not one thing in the whole of this manifestation has one single meaning. The meanings change according to the capacity, according to the evolution, according to the maturity of the perceiver. The pictures change. Nobody can solve the riddle of this universe. And certainly not one who is not baptized in the heart, in the spirit. Only those who have somehow said yes to the inmost being, <coughs> who have travelled inwardly, will bring light somehow into this world, who will somehow seem to be the cause of many people having a change in heart and don't know why their, their hearts are so compelled to move into action, to give everything, just to be a part of such a, such a great vision, a great, a great movement of consciousness. These things happen. The world has moved like that, in big steps at certain points, mm. because human beings wake up one by one. We don't have to wake up in hundreds, you know. One here, one there, now and again. The light of awakening is so powerful, as I said before, that we can remember the birthday of Christ, and the birthday of Mahavira, the birthday of the Buddha, and so on. Why? Because they represent, you know, triumphs of the human experience. But they are not here to be worshipped as mere gods. They are here to point out the God in you, also. Because we are damn lazy for what is true, and have a lot of energy for what is foolish. It is like that. We are <laughs> foolish beings on one level, but yet the brilliance in us is our potential that we are also divine, somehow. This is it. So I am not paying a compliment to say that, yes, the God Self is in us. This is a simple truth. But also the Devil Self is in us also. And we have to transcend that, that light or lack of light. We have to overcome it. This is, our, this, is the grand, this is the grand play of the existence, in fact, mm. that a human being tran can transcend those powers. And whether you believe in them or not, they still operate. Mm. That there is darkness in the world of duality, there is righteousness, and there is there's evil. It, it plays like this. Mm. And it seems the purpose of intelligent existence is to, to, is to transcend the influence of the dark energies of life, which manifest in the human instrument, and become alive to the light of consciousness. <coughs> this, is the, this is the possibility, and it's a living possibility. I am here also as evidence of that to show, and to guide also, not in some poetic way, but in the, in the practical way. And there are people growing in that, 
and falling asleep in that also. So, let us be intelligent about it. Yes, many of these things have been happening for a long time and will continue to happen up to a point. <coughs> no? And it's never quite the picture that you see. Don't ever think that you have a complete take on the picture. You see, many, many subtle things are happening in this universe. Subtle things, subtle powers and forces are working here, you see, to sustain this mighty show. And at the heart of them is a benevolent power, a great power. This universe is not a cursed place. We are like fishes dying of thirst in the ocean. We must turn around a little bit. How we will do it, even. Not even by ourselves we cannot do it. It's only grace we can do that. But then you come to see that also grace is also another name for what we are. And it is here working always. It never becomes it's never tired. One kiss from grace is greater than a thousand human successes. So when she comes near you, say yes unreservedly. Plunge into the ocean of your own self. This is a mighty existence. I like when you fire me up a little bit, and, uh, <laughs> because I also have passion too. <laughs> okay, thank you for today. Govinda Gopal.